Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. It is good to be back in the studio and not wearing makeup. <laughs> welcome back. Are you wearing makeup in Aberdeen on your holiday? I just all the time. Yeah. Do you not? Well, apparently in Aberdeen you have to wear makeup if you want to go bouldering in certain areas. Yes. Those are called no-go areas. That's what I've heard. <laughs> So pretty good news this week. Pretty big. Yeah, big, At one big. point you thought we were scratching around, but actually we've got the one and only, you guessed it, Mr. Adam Ondra. The main goal of Adam's recent trip to Yosemite became clear over the last week as his Instagram account started to show his planned on-site ascent of the Salathi Wall with the Belgian climber Nico Favres. A successful climb of this nature has never before been done on this route. Salathi Wall is considered by many as the holy grail of big wall climbing. Adam and Nico made good progress up to the most famous pitch of all, the head wall, where he fell on the upper section of this pitch and on his second attempt he fell right below the anchor. So it's not actually that clear as to whether he then after that went on and freed it because in some reports it's saying he's now planning to maybe try go and go back and do a free ascent of the route. But what's uh, interesting about that is that um, obviously it's never been done before, but Yuri Hurigama in 1997 attempted to do it and fell twice. Um, which many sees as one of the most impressive big wall on-site attempts of all time. I think this is, the, if anything shows the progress of our sport, the fact that when that thing was first climbed, it took them weeks of nailing their way up the 10 road. days, and then 10 Adam, day siege. Just, and they were nailing all the yeah, way. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Adam just rocks up, has a look and is like, all right, pop up there. It's just, it's outrageously good. Mm, absolutely. But then big ups to Yuri for doing that, what, 20, 21, I said, 22 oh, years time, ago. Yeah. Time. Incredible. Uh, now we're talking a lot about free soloing at the moment, especially with the release of Alex Honnold's free solo film, but we don't often talk about free soloing buildings. The French Spider-Man, Hélène Robert, has made a solo ascent of the Heron Tower in London. The building is 230 meters high and he completed the climb in 40 minutes. Alain was arrested as he topped out, charged with causing a public nuisance. A bit further, 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 okay. further. Open stop, the stop, 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 stop. Thank you so open, much. Open, open the door. Open the door. Sorry, can you open Thank you. Thank you so So the whole of that climb was filmed and documented by the photographer and filmmaker Fred Moi, which is, and his photos are on screen throughout the whole thing. So do go to his Instagram to check that out because it's fascinating. A lot of controversy around this one. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the police were like complaining because he got arrested and they obviously have to send police and they were saying it takes away from their general policing duty, which I can, I can get. And if he falls yeah. on someone, he kills himself and he kills others. And people were saying it's a marketing thing. But for me, regardless of the ins and outs, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, like, did he even have a bag of chalk with him? Yeah, yeah, chalk. He's and got climbing like, shoes. Clubby shoes uh, what climbing shoes is he wearing? I don't know. I was trying. Genuinely, I was trying to look. They're kind of those high, um, high ankle, like old school booties. They looked a bit old school. Oh, nice. I want to get him on the show. But I know <laughs> yeah, we totally should. Yeah, brilliant. Um, okay, so next up, we've got uh, some news from Century Crack in Utah. Exciting. Century Crack, the notorious off with root crack in Utah, has seen a third ascent from the Salt Lake City climber Danny Parker. The route is considered the hardest crack climb in the world at 514B8C, running dead horizontal for 85 foot. Danny had tried the route in 2016 after training a year specifically for the route, but it wasn't until he met the wide boys, Tom Randall and Pete Whittaker, who made the first ascent in 2011, that he was able to get some tips from their training regime and get in the right shape in order to send the test piece. Yeah, so super impressive. I, weirdly enough, I spoke to um, one of his friends who works at a momentum climbing gym in Salt Lake City just before they're about to head out and do this. Um, and he assured me that the, uh, Danny had been training unbelievably hard for this. Has he got a similar sort of Tom Randall's cellar setup? I think he's he... got like a similar setup where he like uh, does like sessions, basically just going up and down looping <laughs> just like they did. I think he like, basically they told him his their, their training regime and he went off for like a year or so, did it and then came back and was able to send it. 
That's awesome. Um, but it is like, I, yeah, I think it's one of the most impressive routes in the world. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, the photos just athletic, athletically, aesthetically, it mm. looks just and aste- and athletically, and athletically yeah. is, uh, is impressive. Yeah. Uh, moving on to a bit more UK news. The slate quarries in North Wales have been nominated by the UK government for World Heritage Site status. The nomination process for World Heritage Sites is very thorough and a UNESCO organisation will make a decision in 2021. The Heritage Minister, Michael Elias, said, Gwynedd's slate landscape is hugely important. Its vast quarries and mines have not only shaped the countryside of the region, but also countless buildings across the UK and the world. So pretty cool. We've obviously been hanging out in the Slate Quarries recently, doing stuff uh, with Katie, and it's just this stunning environment just to be in. But no idea yet what this will mean for climbers, because if it's a World Heritage Site, will they let us scramble all over it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just trad. But then there's bolts in there already, so... There are. I mean... They're not going anywhere. But also, Slate Climb is part of the heritage of that area to me. It's been there almost as long as the quarries, so it's... I, I hope they keep that. And from a seamless link from Slate Quarries to 9B Counters, it's a 9B Counter. So here it is, the 9B Counter. It's very clean and crisp and you perfectly... Still haven't, we still haven't done the, the... Yeah, okay, but it's still no coffee mugs. That's why I left it here and I didn't take it to the UK. Hmm. Anything on it? Uh, no, nothing. So from one competition to another competition, uh, we ran this Instagram comp uh, a couple of weeks ago about winning the signed Adam Andre poster. You had to comment below it and say about your personal breaking climbing boundaries. Uh, and we picked a winner and the winner is Dirty Road Hard. That's your Instagram tag. That's not my Instagram no, tag. No, yours. It's it. his. It's his. It's yeah, his. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't win. I can't win. It's definitely not me. Uh, but there are some amazing stories in there. Like, mm, yeah, incredible. Essays on that thing. It yeah, was, it was awesome. Thank you so much for sending uh, sending them in. Really, really, really appreciate it. And it was like it was amazing to to uh, read some of the stories mm. of like your struggles and just persevering. I think it's uh, yeah, unbelievably impressive. Thank you. Uh, talking about content now on the Epic TV website, uh, I've got quite a cool climbing daily that came out yesterday. Yeah. Um, so he's a guy called Justin Salas, who's this, uh, he's a paraclimber, he's uh, basically blind um, and he's uh, super strong, really cool, really psyched uh, and it was amazing hanging out with him. So do go onto the website and check all that out if you haven't Have seen we got it. a clip for that or something else? We've got a clip. Are we, we going to show we, it? Should we show it? Roll the, roll the intro, BT. We'll draw the VT. Being here in Font is one of the best things I think I could ask for is in terms of like technique and style while we're climbing. Oftentimes when I'm climbing, I have to pause in all these strange positions to feel around for the next foot or hand. Um, but here in Fontainebleau, a lot of the positions are very bizarre and a lot of the holds are not, the, not as good as you'd like them to be. So I find that I'm pausing in positions I never would have been able to think of, you know, prior to being here in Fontainebleau. And so it's teaching me a lot about how to be more controlled on stone and use my feet more appropriately and all, you know, everything under the sun as far as that's concerned. Um, And then just being outside in general is where my heart is definitely, like, it's where my psych is the highest. Um, I love indoor gyms, I love training, I'm a training advocate and like pretty obsessed about it, but um, coming outside and being involved in nature and having a good time with my friends is always the best. Amazing. Yeah, Impressive. He's, he's a really cool guy, so check him well out. Well filmed. Thanks. No worries. Um, right, last week I was talking about uh, how on Thursday I was going to be the Arcteryx um, main store in Piccadilly, where we were going to have like a launch party for Blockfest. Uh, we did that. I was there. Here's a little uh, clip of what went down. Hello, welcome to Central London. We're here with one of the main sponsors of the seventh season of Blockfest, Arcteryx Piccadilly. We're in the store, we've got the fingerboard competition going on and we are celebrating the launch of the next season. This year for Blockfest, two new venues, the amazing Harrow Wall, biggest bouldering wall in the UK and a brand new venue in London, Yonder, plus another three amazing venues. This season is set to be the best so far. Can't wait to get it underway.
stay tuned to Epic TV for all of the Blockfest content this year. We've got the highlights, we've got extra material, loads and loads of stuff coming your way. So keep checking it out, Epic TV. Yeah, cool, super fun night. Thanks so much for Arcteryx Piccadilly for organising that and also for Blockfest for organising that, putting that together as well. Um, it was, uh, and it is the launch party of, of Blockfest, and when's the first Blockfest? Next weekend is the first one, yeah. and then it kind of spans throughout the winter season for yeah. various different gyms in London. So. And where are people going to be able to watch it if they want to watch it? Sorry, I screwed up. It's not just London, it's Brighton's got one as well, isn't it? Southern UK. Southern UK. Yeah. There you go. Uh, if you want to watch it, Epic yeah. TV, Climbing Daily. Climbing Daily? Yep, the, the highlight show usually comes out like the Tuesday or Wednesday some Friday after the event, but the week after the event takes place, check it out because your faces might be on it. Your faces, and it's still not too late to enter. Uh, so head along to blockfest.com. Link. Links in the below. It might be blockfest.com.uk. UK. But uh, anyway, uh, what's up next? We've got Cold House Media. Cold House Media have been vlogging, and where have they been vlogging? In Nepal. 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 Um, so here's a little clip. First morning, we're about to go for a walk up the road to see what we can see. We're walking along a road which has a lot of the climbing above it and also below the road. We've been walking for 30, 40 minutes looking for the cliffs around us. There's some good rocks. There's some bad rocks, but overall it is very pretty. Keep looking for what's going to catch our eye. And we made it somewhere. Just walked for two hours coming up here and just got to that cool zone. So those guys are in Nepal, they're bolting routes uh, and they're not really doing much sort of big mountaineering stuff, but they do look a bit cold and it's cold here in Europe as well. And what would I do, Hugo, if it's cold? Uh, go for a run. I could do that. But if, let's say I want to do some kind of insulating thing. Get a duvet from your bed and wrap it around uh, I'm you. I'm trying to, we're trying to flog stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to throw uh, you uh, okay, and sorry. then you do the... Yeah, okay, fine. So uh, at the moment, at, in the outlet, there's a lot of insulated jackets, which uh, look incredibly cozy and warm. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd probably choose... Uh, ooh, Ma Mountain Hardware thermostatic jacket. Nice. Uh, and it's mega cheap. Yeah, it's up to like 30% off, more than 30% more, more than thirty off some stuff. So yeah. joking apart, it is a big sale. There's loads of stuff there. It's being added to all the time. So if you want a bargain and it is getting cold. It is getting cold. I'm cold right now. Yeah. Do you like the fire? It's lit. Oh, damn. Mm. I think we're done. Uh, yeah, I think there's one more thing to talk about. Um, what, <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? Uh, I don't know. What are you doing this weekend? Uh, I don't know. I'm vlogging. Are you, yeah, you're, is this what we're going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. You have reinvented your vlogging life, haven't you? Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing vlog member. That, and what does that, does that mean you grow a moustache whilst vlogging? I'm basically vlogging every day. So this will be on the vlog. This is a vlog within the... Well, this is a vlog within the thing, except Whoa. my camera's not working. There we go, it's working now. So say hi. Say hi everybody to the vlog. Hey vlog. Anyway, also I want to apologise for this flickery screen in the background. Flo wouldn't get out of the way because he says he's got an urgent edit yeah. to go. So this got to be Apparently today. an edit a day is quite hard work or something. Whatever. I used to do five a month. <laughs> See you later. Bye.